Even as a child, I had a fascination about hovercrafts. Fascination may not be the correct term. Looking back on it, it was more of an obsession. In this video, I will show you how I built my craft. I acquired the hull from a village near my home. The hull was in an abandoned building and was destined for the landfill. Whoever started this seemed like they had the right shapes, so I felt the design should work. What I will show you is not based on a plan, just my intuition based on previous experiences. This project truly was a leap of faith as so much energy and time went into the build without knowing for certain if it would work. A friend had a 1985 Toyota Celica that had a good engine but a rusty body. The car had lots of spunk so it seemed like a good engine for the craft. The problem was that the car had the first fuel injected 22R engine. There were nearly 30 pounds of wiring harness and I had to shed most of the weight. I had to get the engine started first and then prune back wiring and get rid of non-essential parts. It's July 25th and we got fuel flowing through the filter coming to the tank okay. contact. and contact. <laughs> I needed flexible fiberglass panels to complete the hull, so I made my own sheets by waxing a steel plate and then laying fiberglass matting onto the steel sheet. The wax made it easy to peel away from the steel sheet. I had to close in the plenum where the air would get directed through holes that would feed each skirt segment. You will see the fiberglass runners I fabricated for the bottom of the craft by waxing a 2x2 two two board and covering it with fiberglass. With the bottom sheets in place, I was able to fiberglass over the structure to provide rigidity. I started work on the rudders. They were made with three wood airfoil shapes, then covered with clear plastic. I poured expandable foam, then sanded it to shape and fiberglass them. The rod supporting them is from a fiberglass roadway marker so it will not corrode or swell with humidity. What would be a hovercraft without a joystick? I wanted a joystick handle that custom fit my hand so I used paper mache to get the shape right and then fiberglassed it. The hull bottom lacked rigidity so I used my fiberglass panels to make box structures. I filled them with expandable foam and then sealed the top with a fiberglass sheet. I had to order the fan as I needed to get the drivetrain working. I ordered the fan and belt from Universal Hovercraft. I needed a pulley for the belt. I couldn't find a lightweight pulley so I had to make one out of laminated plywood. I did some research on the belt profile. I then drafted the profile and cut it on my CNC plasma table to make a tool suitable for machining the grooves and the wooden pulley. The plywood had some knots in the layers, so I used resin to fill in the holes and then recut the grooves on the pulley. Pulleys seemed perfectly balanced. I was so happy. Even better yet, the belt fit perfectly. Now it was time to work on the drive system. I cut a quarter inch plate on the CNC and mounted a flexible coupler. A shaft connects the coupler to a pulley supported by a pillow block bearing assembly. I had to fiberglass a support for the engine mount and radiator. I fabricated a mount for the upper pulley that drives the fan. There are close tolerances between the fan and the duct. In this case, about an eighth of an inch maximum. I did not want any vibration that would cause fan contact with the duct, 
so I stiffened the mount assembly with cross braces. At the time, I did not have a belt tensioner, but later I added one. I mounted the rudders, and it was time for the first test. To be honest, I was quite scared that I'd have contact between the fan assembly and the shroud, and the whole thing would blow apart. This is January 5th, 2016. This is the first start of the engine with the fan. Starting up the fuel pump. Hopefully no leaks. Start to draw custom skirt segments based on the measurements of the hull. Fortunately, I found a document online of how to do this. There are seven different skirt profiles. My wife is amazing. She sewed the 107 individual segments that make up the entire skirt. The craft cannot be complete without a cab. We brought back a 1997 Jeep Cherokee from the local auto wreckers. The cab is amazing, but I needed to reduce its weight as much as possible. At this point, I wasn't sure how that cab was going to fit on the body. My neighbor Murray came over to help me figure that out, and we seemed to have a good fit. The craft needed a heater to keep the occupants warm, and also keep the windows from fogging. So I built a box around an old school bus auxiliary heater core and attached it to the window assembly. I began work on the dash to fit a GPS, tack, voltmeter, coolant temperature gauge, ignition switch, hour meter, and a ham radio, as well as a bank of switches. It was time to test the craft to see if it would lift now that the skirt segments are installed. skirt worked perfectly. I wanted to test the craft outside but found out that there's a slight slope in front of the shop. Contact! Every hovercraft needs comfortable heated seats, so I found two seats from a Volkswagen Jetta. This is the final dashboard, complete with switches for the light bar, side and cargo LED lights, strobe, navigation lights, bilge pump, window washer, wipers and horn. It was time to paint starting with a primer coat. I love the color red. The last application was a clear coat that made the red come alive. I wanted to try the craft at the lake, but I had no way to haul the craft. So I found a gutted RV for $700 and made it into a flat deck with a loading platform. It was time to bring the craft to the lake. Notice that there are no guards in front of the fan. I was so eager to see if it worked. I couldn't wait.
draft worked really well. Top speed was about 58 kilometers per hour with three people on board. I added a screen assembly and closed in the cab rear with a sliding door assembly. Thanks for watching. If you like, please subscribe.